Oh yeah, I'm coming to you from my kitchen uh, because it's really cute and I wanna change up my background and also show you all the different fun spots in my house and show you that I really believe in color because uh, I have it all over my own place and I'm obsessed with it. Anyways, episode three, Yeehaw Cowgirl. Uh, howdy everyone, very excited to talk about this room. It was one of the most intimidating rooms for me. I really had no idea where to begin. So let's start up at the top of the episode. I've got all my handy notes so I can touch on everything. So this episode starts off with Trixie doing a show in LA. And just for like the fun behind the scenes of reality TV, I will say Trixie was working nonstop her regular stuff while filming Trixie Motel. And it was impressive and like borderline scary to watch. Like Trixie does not stop working. She was in town filming all of the time and she would leave on the weekends and we all kind of like relaxed a little bit. And she was touring and playing shows and working her ass off. And as somebody who is also a serial entrepreneur and a hard worker, I ain't got nothing on Trixie Mattel. She is non-stop workhorse. And I respect the hell out of it. I don't know if it's for me, but damn, like that was very accurate in our show. At the beginning of this episode, Trixie and I talk about the pool deck. We touch on the pool deck a lot throughout the series because it was like obviously one of the biggest decisions we had to make for the motel. I mean, it's a huge space. Of course, I wanted to go wild with tile. Another reason I wanted to do my kitchen on this episode is because look at this tile. I feel like tile is the most underrated surface. It can bring so much color and life into a space. And it was my dream of dreams to tile the entire pool deck. I did get some quotes. And I tried to work with Fire Clay Tile, who does my amazing tile at my house. Um, but damn, it's just expensive. And there was so much square footage with the pool deck. And the more square footage you have, the more tile you need and the more it costs to install. And we were worried about things like slipperiness, which is one thing to consider, but there is different versions of tile, like concrete tile or tile with different um, coating that does make it non-slip. So I really tried for tile, but unfortunately it wasn't gonna work, but luckily we made the pivot to painting the concrete. One of my biggest goals for the pool deck was to paint a mural on the bottom of the pool deck. Uh, that was also not allowed by the city as we discovered many things, but honestly I'm a little relieved because after doing the mural in Pink Flamingo, I was not about to be out in the Palm Springs sun painting a gigantic mural on the bottom of a pool. <laughs> But I think it worked out. We had some big dreams for the pool deck. So lots of pivots and lots of conversations around that. So our first celebrity guest on this episode was Orville Peck and oh, his eyes are just so dreamy. You can't see much else besides his eyes because he's known for wearing his fringe mask all the time, but the eyes, that's enough. Uh, I loved the scene where Trixie and Orville do like a stare down in Pioneer Town. I mean, it was just like eye candy for everyone. Uh, Orville is just so sweet and funny. I didn't get to meet him, but I'm a huge fan of his music. Um, I don't know what I was doing on set that day, but would have loved to meet him, Orville. I thought their Pioneer Town scene was so cinematic and beautiful, and Pioneer Town is right by Palm Springs. If you don't know, it's in Joshua Tree area, and it's super cute and funky and definitely was the perfect place to film the scene and to gather inspiration for the Yeehaw Cowgirl Room. Something I really love about what Orville and Trixie do and something they touched on in this episode was how as gay country music stars, they're really like reclaiming a whole genre that a lot of people feel kind of wronged by or like they can no longer be a part of. And they're just kicking ass and doing what they love and hell yeah. Trixie and Orville also did an amazing job on that bar. When I first walked into that room, I was like, wait, this tufted bar is in great condition. The color is awful, awful color, but I felt like there could be something there that we could repurpose. And luckily Trixie had a lot of experience with repainting vinyl materials like that. I didn't, none of us knew that it would turn out as well as it did. We were looking at different leather paints and possible options, 
but just that spray paint went on so evenly. They did an incredible job and it looked like a brand new bar and the color was spot on. We were so happy with that DIY and Orville did an incredible job on it. So I was born and raised in California and when it came to designing a country themed room, I feel like I was really out of my depth. It's not really something I know a whole lot about. I'm very much into like the more 70s retro California vibes, but I was ready to take on the challenge and I really wanted to impress Trixie who was way more in that world than I was, yet I was designing this room for her um, and trying to meet those expectations. So I did a lot of research uh, and some of the inspiration Trixie and David provided me, they had some sort of Southwestern prints. So I thought that was a good way to kind of bring color into the room. I feel like a lot of country spaces tend to be kind of warmer tones, more earthy tones, but I really wanted those Trixie bright colors in this space. So bringing in the Southwestern prints, I think was a great place to start. And that was kind of where I found a lot of my color inspiration. I don't know why, but like turquoise and pink feel like a very Western-y combo to me, especially if you're doing like a femme kind of Western look. So those were like my two main colors. Coral mixes so beautifully with that and really kind of brings in a little bit of that earthiness while still having pink and like that girly fun to it. And I think the whole color spectrum really like came out of those prints from the different textiles I was able to source. And from that, I designed the rainbow cow prints, which we ended up doing a mural. I also printed that onto fabric and we reupholstered those two rocking chairs. They didn't show it a whole lot in that episode, but I think it was pretty cool. I went to the same printmaker who does all of the printing for my clothing line, Daisy LA, and I had them print onto a gorgeous heavyweight fabric velvet. It's funny because, I mean, even though I've been doing interiors for a while, I hadn't really mixed my own textile design in with the interiors before this project. And it was a really cool opportunity to be able to do that with the curtains. I did a lot of the pillows with the same printer who does my clothing line and the fabric for those chairs. And reupholstering, I mean, it's definitely not cheap, but it's pretty amazing. Like if you, you can do it yourself or you can take it to a reupholster shop, which we did with these chairs and we just dropped them off with the fabric picked them up, they looked like they were made that way. And it was so cool to have the mural also tie into the chairs and tie into the whole color scheme of the room. I also think the idea of doing a sort of muted rainbow cow print was very tricksy, but also brought in that Western element, but in a fun, kitschy way. Speaking of fun colors, on this episode, we also decided the perfect pink for the motel. This was something that they highlighted on the episode, but they didn't highlight how, how indecisive we were. And I think it's funny, people that might not work a lot with colors probably saw those eight different shades of pink next to each other and were like, uh, they all look pretty similar. But as somebody who works with colors, I'm like, these are vastly different. This is a huge decision we started to get really psyched out on it. And we actually didn't end up choosing the color until a few days later. We really kept going back and staring at the colors and we even uh, painted some directly on the building. And that was where we got really freaked out because we felt pretty good about the paint colors on the door. And then we just were like, let's just paint them on the building to really see. And they looked so different on the building than they did the door. If you are testing paint swatches, it is really helpful to just paint the wall that you want it to go on because that's where you're going to see how the light looks on it. It can look so different depending on the surface. So testing it out on the wall that you're actually going to put it on is huge. And when we did that, the first color ended up still being the best color and we started to feel a lot better about it. And something also that was really cool about it is the color is called Sweet 16. And on that episode, Trixie talks about really not being able to express how much she loved pink growing up in a small conservative town and how pink was like this secret that she had. And it was kind of cool to do a sweet 16, like the name of the color sort of reclaiming pink for Trixie. And now she has this giant building and a whole brand that's celebrating pink in a very big, loud way. I mean, we painted an entire building this 
amazing pink color. And something that we really wanted to do with the outside of the building was stay true to the original color of the motel, but kind of like refine it a little bit. It was a little more corally pink. And we really wanted that Barbie Trixie pink. We didn't want it to be too warm. We didn't want it to be too cool. We really wanted to strike that perfect balance and find the perfect pink. And I think through some trial and error, error we really found that. And it's true that the city of Palm Springs tried to get us to paint that wool back white. Are you lying? And David Silver put his foot down and was like, absolutely not. And I was like, thank God, because that would have been such a bummer. Uh, and I don't think anything has happened since, so I guess we're good. And now that the show's like become very synonymous with Palm Springs and is very iconic, I think we should be good there. And I'm pretty sure David and Trixie are gonna refuse to paint it anyway. But the city kept meddling with my colors. And the pink is like the perfect backdrop for the Trixie's cactus garden, which was so cool. David Rios and his team reclaimed all of the amazing cacti that was already at the motel. I mean, I didn't want to move a lot of those, but David and Trixie were worried about people getting hurt, which is understandable. I've had, I have a lot of cactuses at my Airbnb rental in Palm Springs, and there's been a few little pricks here and there, so I get it. And I think having it on the exterior of the motel is so cool. And I love that there is a space for people that aren't staying at the motel to get their photo. And it's so cute with the pink and the mountain backdrop and all of the cactuses. I'm happy they were able to save those and repropagate them in the front because they were so cute. And they ended up like splitting them all up perfectly so it looked really cohesive and beautiful. So this was the room where we were not gonna mess with the faux razo again. And we just went with a simple wood vinyl flooring. This was right after we had the faux razo incident. We didn't really have an idea what we were gonna do with the other floors yet. So this was sort of our pivot that we were able to do really quick. It's a durable floor and it worked very well for the Yeehaw Cowgirl theme, having the wood floor. I did a lot of chestnut wood colors in that room. So I was totally fine with doing that. And I think it turned out pretty cute. There was a cut scene that was probably one of my favorite scenes that we did where we bring in the wood floor and we're looking at all the different colors. And then David Rios tests or like more or less shows us how durable the floor is by dancing on it with these stilettos. And I guess David had never worn high heels before and it was a really funny moment and we were all cracking up so i'll post some behind the scenes of that on my social media um but it was really really cute reveal time so Brittany broski was our second celebrity guest and the pressure was on i mean she's from texas and i'm from california and i was here trying to design this room to pass off as a cowgirl room and they had somebody actually from Texas coming in and essentially judging my room so I was definitely nervous but her reaction was hilarious and amazing and I'm really really happy they liked it and I think I was able to sort of take the cowboy theme and put my California girl twist on it it still felt colorful and kitschy like Palm Springs but also cowgirly enough and there's a lot of different elements in this room that were very on theme that I think helped me kind of strike a balance between cowgirl and California. One of my favorite reactions in this room was Trixie seeing her face in the wallpaper. I didn't realize she hadn't seen that before that moment. And it was just one of those things that I thought was kind of cute to throw in my wallpaper design and like have it be more cowgirl Trixie themed and her reaction was so priceless. I'm so glad she was able to like recognize herself right away in that. I also put the pink guitar and a bunch of other elements and I was inspired by those really cute like vintage western flannel fabrics that have like landscapes in them and being able to put in a bunch of different western motifs along with Trixie and that landscape feel just Turned out really cute. I think the wallpaper in that room is definitely one of my favorite elements. Obviously having Orville as a source of inspiration for this room brought on all of the fringe, that really cool vintage light fixture 
uh, with a little fringe added, which just totally transformed it, made it really fun. There's a little fringe pendant in the kitchen area, fringe lampshades next to the bed. And the bed is probably, next to the wallpaper, the bed is probably one of my favorite things. I think it turned out so cute. I was having a really hard time finding a bed that felt right for the Western theme, but didn't make it too earthy or masculine. And I think going custom on this was definitely the way to go. I love that they were able to do that sort of horseshoe shape. I mean, as I was doing the designs, I was going over a bunch of different options. I was gonna do those little like ends on the horseshoe potentially. I had a bunch of different ideas, but I think like keeping the horseshoe really simple so you could tell what it is uh, without being overboard with it uh, was really pretty. It had the tuffeting in the middle and then it had the little wavy edges, which is just like a trend that I'm in love with right now. And I think kind of made the bed feel very in style and not kind of like too dated or kitschy, but kind of brought it to the modern day. That turquoise fabric was just absolutely perfect. It matched the amazing bar, the mural, all the different elements in that room. Speaking of Southwestern motifs, that tile in that room is so sick. I mean, I don't know if there would really be another space where I would use it besides a cowgirl themed room because it's very on the nose themey and luckily we were able to choose all the individual colors we worked with fire clay tile on that same as my backsplash right here and what's cool about fire clay is they're hand painting all their tiles so you can choose all the different colors that go into all of the shapes and we were able to pick the perfect colors to match all of my different designs in that room and as you know I love coordinating moments. I love when all the colors are cohesive and make sense. So being able to do the custom bed, the custom mural, the wallpaper, and the backsplash in all matching colors really just brought a beautiful color story and made the room look cohesive and put together, even though it had a bunch of different things going on and different patterns and different colors. So one of the super Western things in this room was the bar chairs. And I actually sourced that from a restaurant sourcing website. So those are like the old school Western bar stools that you would find at actually a Western bar. And luckily they had it so you can customize the color and uh, the color of the metal and the color of the vinyl. And they're very heavy duty commercial grade restaurant saloon chairs and they're really cute. Like the fact that we were able to pick the colors on those made it really special. Some of the other custom things or like little things that we changed out in that room are all of the pools. I'm glad they highlighted those on the episode because we were able to find horseshoe pools. We were able to find cow boot pools. We switched out the knobs on the drawers, dressers, which is also, these are all switched out at our house. And it's something that I like to do in spaces. One of those little details that seem so small but makes such a big difference and makes you think, wow, everything in this room is really thought out and special. Even the little side tables when you walk in, we changed out the pools on those and it made it feel special and custom to the room and again helped nail that cowgirl theme. And the custom stained glass in this room was so beautiful. I love that it actually looks like a desert sunset, like you're looking out of the bathroom into a landscape with the desert sunset. And again, we did that same reglazing, a couple of the things in the bathroom, like the mirror shape, the lighting, the lighting in the little glam room is like a horse or like a wheel, carriage wheel. So there's just lots of tiny little details that I think really make the cowgirl theme work, but the colors and the different elements still felt on trend, still felt youthful, still felt Palm Springsy, not too dusty. And to get Brittany Broski's stamp of approval was amazing. And I felt so good about the room. And I will say, even though this was one of the scariest rooms for me to design, I think we hit it out of the park and everyone's reaction just made me so happy, especially Brittany's and all of you guys. So thank you so much. You made this California girl feel really good and not like a total imposter. Thank you so much for tuning in. Another Trixie Motel recap, episode three, Yeehaw Cowgirl. Tune in next week for another recap here and make sure you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram at Danny Daisy. 
TikTok at Danny Daisy. Shop my clothing line, Daisy LA. And make sure you're watching Trixie Motel on Discovery Plus. Thanks, guys.